All right, so you know that you qualify for a nanny or suspect that you do. And in the prior video in the series, which you can find here, right, on do you qualify, that's that's where you kind of figured it out. And you've also seen the overview video, which is kind of the, uh, the, the, the overview video for the series, which is here, right? And you kind of have a general idea of the process. So right now I want to talk to you about how do you actually select a nanny? How do you, you know, let's talk about finding a nanny versus hiring a recruiter to, to find one. Let's talk about flexibility in finding a nanny and let's talk about what a lack of flexibility actually means for your process. If that sounds good, I'll see you after the break. So welcome back, my name is Damien DeNoble. This is a Law Great. I'm an attorney at Frontier Tech Law and I love talking about H2B visas. I love talking about immigration issues and this is part of our H2B series. This is video three in the series. We're talking about, you know, what does it mean to find that perfect nanny and what does it mean uh, to be flexible or not flexible in this program? So let's just back up a little bit. We talked about this in the overview video. I talk about this in lots of H2B videos. Um, there's a three part process to applying for a nanny, right? As an employer, you apply for the Department of Labor, which gives you a certification to be an employer. They say this, this employer has a valid reason for applying for the H2B program. Then you have USCIS, who kind of confirms what the DOL has already said. And then you have the Department uh, of State at the consular level, which approves the actual applicant. So right now we are concerned with the Department of State process, right? When we're talking about the nanny. When you pick your nanny, when you go through the Department of Labor, USCIS, the first thing you're gonna pick is what country the nanny can come from initially. So let's say that you want to bring a nanny from the Philippines, which is actually one of the harder countries to get an interview in as we found the past three cycles. Um, the lines are just so long and they fill up so fast, but let's say the Philippines. You are uh, convinced that this nanny from the Philippines is perfect. They have a culture, you say, of care in the Philippines. Um, they are have a culture of working abroad and you've just heard really good things about a nanny from the Philippines. And also, you know somebody from the Philippines that your friend's family worked with who's just perfect and, and you really wanna bring them in. Well, here's the thing. Let's say that you are applying for one of the two H2B cycles that either start, where work either starts October 1st or later or April 1st or later. Well, if you just want that one nanny, that means that either you have to nail your July 1st application to bring in somebody by October 1st, which means that your application has to be perfect, really without more than one notice of deficiency, because otherwise you're gonna run out of time to get a visa number. Remember, there's only 33,000 visas per cycle. Or if you're applying for the April 1st cycle, which means you apply January 1st, you really have to nail you have to nail the lottery. There's about 150,000 visas are requested within the first three days of the program for the April cycle. There are 33,000 visa numbers available. And if you just want that one nanny, who's was probably not gonna be a returning H2B worker. The fact that there's additional visas given out in May or June is not gonna mean anything to you because you cannot bring her in as a new worker since new workers are, can only be brought in for about four countries at the moment. They're in Latin America and Haiti. And you cannot bring her back as a returning worker because she probably doesn't have an H2B visa from the previous three years. So that means that you have to go into the next cycle, which is again going to the next year's October 1 cycle which starts with a filing on July 1st, okay? So you have to know that having that one nanny because of the nature of this process, which has a lottery for the April cycle and which is always time sensitive, including that October 1 cycle, you have a lower margin of error. Contrast this with being open to just having a nanny. Under this scenario, you probably haven't identified your nanny, or maybe you have, but you know, you're kind of lukewarm. You're like, okay, if we don't get her, we're, we're willing to get anybody else. And you work with a recruiting agency who can set up interviews for you, right? To interview multiple nannies from your, you know, possibly country of choice, if that recruiting agency can identify people with previous H2B registration so you can get these folks through an additional allotment. But but anyway, you're, you're, you're open to, to, to uh, possibly a, a nanny from your country of choice, but let's say you're open to a nanny from any country, including Latin America, including Spanish speaking nannies, you then have a much greater set of possibilities. 
Specifically, if you're willing to get a nanny from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, or Haiti, and we'll talk about why Haiti is a special case actually in just a second, you can get them through the additional worker allotment, which gives you not two bites at the apple, just for the October 1st and April 1st cycle, gives you four bites because you can also take advantage of these additional allotment cycles, uh, which also happen an additional one time per year. Okay, so instead of having two bites at the apple, you get four. I think that is something that I honestly don't have a lot of clients who want that. Everybody wants that special nanny, but if you were open to it, and especially if you're looking for a Spanish speaking nanny, you have even more options, or you're gonna feel like you have more options in this process. Okay, so let's talk about nannies with special skills. The H2B visa, it's a misnomer. It's called the unskilled worker visa. It's a misnomer in the fact that you can get very skilled workers. But what we have to respect is that if you try to put into your job description, if you try to ask in the application for somebody with very specific skills, so I've seen multiple languages, I've seen specialty halal or kosher cooking, skills or even skills with very you know specific types of foods a lot of times that's going to get sent back for being too specific right because it's not going to fit within the typical job description of the nanny position and the reason it's going to get kicked back is because the department of labor is always thinking about american workers and they're saying well you have this position uh, the typical american worker is not going to have these skills so that's automatically going to disqualify them and what we need from you, uh, American employer, is that you give Americans a fair chance, which means you have to open up a position that's fairly designed for the average American would-be nanny. And so there are limits to what you can ask. Now, that doesn't mean, right, luckily that the nanny who is perhaps overqualified for the job description that you put in is not going to be let in far from it. It just means that you have to be aware of that early in the process. I get that question all the time, so I just wanna address it. I mentioned Haiti. Haiti, for whatever reason, even though it joined the program about two years ago, I think a combination of environmental disaster and political turmoil and just a lack of understanding of this program within embassy and consulate in Haiti means that H2B workers who are getting petitioned for and whose petitions are being certified by both DOL and USCIS are just being flatly rejected at the consulates for whatever reason. We saw that again this summer. And so um, for now, I would just say, you know, let's put in brackets, Haiti's still not really a go-to destination. El Salvador is one that uh, the agency I'm a part of, the lobby group I'm a member of, Seasonal Employment Alliance has been working on to make a lot better and Honduras and Guatemala are considered really good uh, countries and again I'm saying that because those are the four countries where we can bring in workers in addition allotments who are new workers don't have prior H2B experience okay and then the other thing you might be thinking about is well what if a nanny's in the country on like a B1 B2 visa like your potential nanny or what if they're here on like a J1 visa or some other legal status as long as they can maintain that status throughout the period where you're waiting for your certification you can then adjust them to the H2B it should be able to work now there are going to be some special cases if you have an au pair uh, they might have a return home uh, requirement. We might have to deal with that. But those are special cases and you should always consult with a lawyer. But in general, yeah, if, if they maintain legal status, they can adjust to the H2B status as well. Again, talk to a lawyer about that because there are always going to be such special circumstances for that, okay? So when you're thinking about a nanny, uh, you know, just to round it up, you have to, you, know, you can be picky, but that's going to limit your options. If you're less picky, uh, you're gonna have more options, right? Because you're gonna have more, more, more ways that you can apply. When you're thinking about the specific skills that your nanny needs, you, you, you gotta think about strategically about whether to actually put those in the job order because you have to think about American workers. And then, you know, finally, your magical nanny can be overqualified, that's not a problem. But you do wanna think about what consulate they're going through because some consulates like Haiti, uh, you know, may not approve them no matter what you do. And then, you know, I hinted at the fact that there are certain consulates like the Philippines, which are just a little slower and that, that, that's true. So every consulate's going to be a little different and that's something that you want to consider with this program. Again, possibly when picking a nanny, okay? And always, always, always look at the H2B eligible country list because your nanny has to be on one of those. So I hope you like this. Uh, there's going to be another video coming up. In that video, I'm going to take you through uh, picking a sole proprietorship or an LLC or some other sort of uh, corporate structure for your nanny petition, okay? We also have this ebook, right? Right here, which is also found in the link below. 
uh, you should download that. That's going to have some, you know, basically summarize what I'm talking about in these videos, but it, it could be handy to have. And you can check out our website. You can, uh, you know, set up a free 15 minute appointment with me. I'm happy to talk to you about this. We are the number one firm right in the country for these nanny visas. So do give me a uh, shout out. And again, schedule a free 15 minute consult with me. I'm happy to set this up. All right, let's go on to the next video. All right, take care.